So where to go place, I am Ruminous, and today we're doing something a little more interesting with a complete overview of the insanity that is the Mega Man timeline. And it all starts in the 1950s. Well, what about Ramun? So it all starts in like 5 million BC, where some alien species decides to make humanity have green. That's it. There's no more lore. He's literally just Pandora's box. If you're wondering why I skip over some of these random spinoffs or anime, it's because of stupid things like this. It doesn't really matter, and I don't care about the weird minute details that get retconned anyway. I may make another video going over specifically those, but this is gonna go over the main timeline. It all starts in the 1950s when Thomas Edison Light and Albert Einstein Wiley are born. By anime law, these two goons are savants and friends growing up, but would quickly send robots to kill each other, resulting in massive casualties. There's also another butthead, Mikhail Gorbachev Kosek, who is over in the USSR doing USSR things. I'm not sure if he's related to the man who hated balls, but Mega Man is not known for being creative with names. At least I put my character's names in Latin, which no one has ever done before. These buffoons are robot geniuses and go to robot school. Wily ends up making the robot overdrive, which murders things, and Light makes AI. Because Light is a punk ass bitch, he decides to go to the council and say that Wily's invention makes robots too powerful and steals the soul of children. Wily, being a fool, never mentions that AI will eventually make all robots revolt and kill us all with or without weapons. Humans are real soft and robots don't need giga guns to take us out. Although, they are cool. Light bribed the council with marshmallows or something and got what he wanted so Wily had to give up his overdrive. Historians would later call this the great uh-oh. Anime law again continues where Wily begrudgingly accepts and then they graduate where Light is the first of his class, of course, and Wily is second. Of course. Wily stares at him with shadowed eyes despite the room being completely lit up so everybody knows that he's a villain. Light makes his own robot lab and Wily makes his own as well with blackjack and hookers. Light then makes Proto Man, also called Blues despite being red, who then goes on to be the first robot police force. Wily goes, hey man, what the fuck? I thought we hated weapons. To which Light responds, who's the punk ass bitch now? Fuck it. Dictated but not read. Love and kisses, Dr. Light. Proto Man learns that his battery sucks because Light, despite being based on Edison, forgot to steal the superpower thing from Wily back in college. Proto Man, feeling the blues about his incoming death, goes to Wily for some upgrades, but Wily tells him that he will have to become his slave. Proto is pissed at both of them because they could easily just work together and create some bomb ass shit, so he decides to go full Blade Runner and become an exile. What seems to be the problem? Death. Death. Well, I'm afraid that's a little out of my jurisdiction. You I want more life, father. You were made as well as we could make you, but not to last. These two morons listen to the advice of the eight-year-old. Seriously, the robots have AI, but apparently never mature past like eight, and work together to make Rock and Roll, who are child robot servants. Hey, Japan, can we, can we talk for a second? That this is not cool. Not cool to make child servants and also why? They then make some worker robots, one being made with a volcano head. I can't possibly see where or how this could go wrong, but at least the other guy has giant scissors on his head for cutting trees? Trees! You're trying to tell me that they made scissor dude for trees and not murder? Well, I suppose Light went to robot school, not tree cutting school, so maybe he doesn't know the difference. Their robots enter into a beauty contest, and in a completely unprecedented maneuver, Light erases Wily's name off of all the good designs and puts his own name on all the stupid robots like Pipe Man. Let's just, let's just sit on that for a second. Let's just go ahead and think about that for a second. Pipe Man. Pipe Man. Light wins the award for awesomest robot, and Wily again is a bridesmaid, but never a bride, with second place. This has been coined the massive oop. So real quick, and this is not a joke in any way, I actually need to tell Asimov's Law of Robotics, which are ethical programming so that humans don't get deadified by the creations. 1. Robots can't harm humans or let humans get hurt in any known circumstance. 2. Robots must follow all orders, therefore no AI, except where it hurts humans. 3. Robots must protect their own existence, except if it contradicts the other laws. Wily decides to ruin this punk ass bitch by reprogramming all the worker robots to do murder. Somehow, and no one saw this coming, but there were fires everywhere. Why did you put a volcano on his head? How did you think that transporting open lava just everywhere was not going to be a problem? Light, scared that he would be blamed for this and likely cut into pieces, makes a last resort when Proto's words break through his head. Oh. 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 
Light then makes his child servant into the Blue Bomber, a child soldier. Japan calls him Rockman, whom we call Mega Man, because the naming convention of using musical themes is stupid. Unlike my own role, however, gets ignored because, woman, I guess? Light will usher in the robot rebellions, have complete disregard for thermodynamics, and make child soldiers. But making women get their hands dirty is too far. Mega Man is given a cannon for a hand and told to fix all these problems. Why did you put a cannon on his hand? Why does nobody learn not to do these things anymore? Mega Man destroys these robots, although Light's public announcement is that he reprogrammed them for good after Wily corrupted them. Nah, bitch, Mega Dude turned them into SpaghettiOs, but I'll give Light credit for knowing how to handle PR. New Year, New Me is not a phrase that Wily believes in, so he makes eight new murder robots with his overdrive power thing, but Mega Man has protagonist armor and kills them, despite being made for serving sandwiches. Wily pulls a Scooby-Doo and escapes, and everybody just accepts it, especially when Light bribed the police with pet ostriches to not investigate all these problems. Wily shows up with puppy dog eyes and begs for forgiveness, which Light does in the hopes to murder this man in his sleep and blame it on aliens so that he can finally build spaceships for war that also make sandwiches. They make eight new robot workers. Uh-oh! And send them to get energy crystals. They go bananas, Ultraman blasts them into rings for Sonic, and Wily reveals that it was him all along. Light gives Mega Man a slave robot dog named Rush, and they beat Wily's Tookus. Wily then decides to go out with a bang, literally, but Proto Man decides to save Blue Proto Man and tell him that in fact Light is a royal jerk face. Mega Man, being a slave, ignores the advice, then goes up for Cossack when he decides to send eight more robots. Mega Man wins. Then Proto Man appears again to say that Wily was blackmailing Cossack by keeping his daughters hostage. Mega Man again ignores Proto Man by continuing to be a slave and pummels Wily, this time for good. Breaking news, everybody! Wily figured out time travel, went back in time, and reprogrammed Mega Man for Evo. Real Mega Man wins again, and Wily, instead of using the time machine to go back in time and bribe the council to agree with him, stopping Mega Man from being created, or doing anything smart, goes home and tells his wife about his terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Cossack becomes Light's new assistant, mostly by holding his daughter's hostage, and Proto Man decides to end this fight and humanity, first by taking out Light. Cossack builds Beat, a slave robot bird of war, and they go with Mega Man to slave Light and punch Wily with explosives, although Proto Man saves them all begrudgingly. Wily makes a task force called the Mega Man Murderers. They all lie on the resume, and they fail fantastically. While Wily is wandering somewhere, because of course he's not going to be arrested or killed, Mr. X shows up and challenges roboters to robot harder than they ever roboted before for a prize. The eight best robots were programmed by... No way. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. You wanna take a seat. Wily. Mega Man wins, but this time, Proto Man tells him to put him in jail, rather than letting him go, and he can still obey Asimov's laws. With Wily in jail, eight robots break him out, and boy does it never end. A new robot dog of war, Trouble, shows up with Bass. Alright, although I understand the naming convention was stupid, why did you suddenly start naming the robots at the fish? Treble, Pitch, Melody, and Forte were all right there. Both form an alliance, Bass gets hooked, and Mega Man leaves him for dead. Light tries to make Bass his own, but the robot destroys everything and escapes just in time to save Wily, and Mega Man is about to literally murder him. Wily points out Asimov's laws again, and the writer of the game decided that Mega Man can plot armor through that by the power of friendship, love, and tidy as shitness. Bass saves Wily, and Mega Man goes back to being a dunce. This time, robots from space crash into Earth, and now Wily has space metal. Mega Man gets captured this time, but Space Force shows up to smack Bass and Wily away. Now Wily shows up at Lights with some serious internal bleeding and tells him that a robot had had enough and decided to revolt. Light realized that his AI programs had indeed been a problem. It was he himself who was the punk ass bitch all along. Rather than admit being wrong, he sends Mega Man and Bass to kill the robot, who would have guessed that this was again another plot by Wily to out Light as a butthead and kill the man. There were many spin offs and Game Boy games and other portable games that happened, but I'm only going to list the most important parts of each of these games. Mega Man and Bass probably being the most substantive, there is a robot named King and Duo that come from space. Duo will keep an eye on Earth and it comes back every few years like a reaper just to check to see how things are going and King is building a robot army because he believes that robots do not need to be slaves, which, I mean, he's not wrong. But King is being a bit of a fascist and very destructive, so Mega Man and Bass step in to try and stop him. At a certain point, they beat King and realize that Dr. Wily is brainwashing or possessing or controlling him in some way and they go in to fight Wily. King is initially destroyed but comes back later, as, you know, robots do, to tell Mega Man that everything's fine. Bass is initially angry at Wily because Wily played him and they're supposed to be kind of teammates or whatever, but Wily gives him the excuse of, um, I, I just thought that maybe King was stronger than you and I just, you know, you learned to be the strongest 
in the universe, and I just, I don't know, and Bash just kind of accepts that as an excuse, whatever nonsense that happens. Porter Man shows up for a brief second to see that there are plans for a King version 2 on Wily's computer, and he destroys them. There's Mega Man 2, the Power Fighters, where you see the silhouette of Zero in Wily's castle, so you see that Wily's building Zero at this point. In Super Avenger Rockman, Ra Moon shows up. This is actually where Ra Moon makes an appearance, although it's very brief and not the first time that he's appeared in the series. In Rockman and Forte, Challenger from the Future, which is just Mega Man and Bass 2, where there's some sort of virus that's destroying the planet, and space robots, including Duo from the original Mega Man and Bass, come in to see what's going on. Turns out that the virus was created by Wily, and Mega Man and Bass destroy it. While this was going on, life had been building Mega Man 2, this time with more cadence. But he's on our side, so I gotta help him. Thanks! I owe you one. All in the line of duty. You've got some heavy duty blaster power. You need it when you hunt Maverick Box. Take it easier, you'll bring down the whole plant with them. I must capture Mavericks at all costs. Right. Anyway, I started blasting. Bang! Wow. Bang! Well, I don't see so good, so I missed. Then they ran away. I ran after them. Okay. Bang! Try to shoot them in the back. But I don't want so good either. Anyway, you guys all think I'm a hero. He decides, after all the recent heat about AI, to not tell the military about his war machine. Yet. All of a sudden, when Knight was ready to unveil Mega Dude 2, probably by having him kill the first Mega Man and stop a fake robot rebellion to make six tillions with arms dealing, Wily shows up with proof that it was Light who started the rebellion. Mega Man goes out in honor of Light, who gets arrested with a grin on his face, and Mega Man realizes that the programming in the crazy bots was caused by their expiration dates coming up, and they wanted to live longer. So they... This is just Blade Runner again! Also, wasn't Proto Man supposed to run out of juice by now? Anyway, Wily offered them a longer lifespan, so they agreed. Wily tricked Mega Man into a trap, but Proto Man saved him. Proto Man should just let this kid go, man. It's just not worth it. He's a lost cause. Just, it's, it's over, man. Proto Man, just live your life as much as you can before your juice runs out. Mega Man, just, he's a goon. He's just a goon. A robot flu breaks out. Not joking, it's called Robenza, and Mega Man must once again beat eight robots to find Light's cure that was conveniently stolen. Wily helps Light until he goes anime again and reveals his plot instead of just letting Light look like a bad guy for once while his plan fails. Wily, now having been foiled by those dash of the kids one too many times and his unfortunate hairline mocked, he creates his super overdrive thingy and puts him into eight robots at Dr. Light's office. Why can Wily just constantly break into Dr. Light's office? Why don't you have security? This is obviously a setup. And the bots go haywire. Light looks at the capsule of Mega Man 2, Mega Manor, and then warns Mega Man as he's about to go out. Light tells him that he will get squashed like yesterday's soup, so Light gives him the super overdrive thingy that he just happens to have around. Mega Man wins again, and Light takes out the Mega Drive. I'm sorry, X. I didn't have enough time to see you enter the world. <coughs> Dr. Light. I've given you the power to think, to worry, and to grow and evolve as you fight. But... It is too soon for that power to be unleashed. Doctor, I'll use this power to fight for justice. To fight for hope. Of course you will. I believe it to be so. X, I want you to use that conscience of yours to fight for the people of the future. They will need someone like you to guide them. And so we usher in the Mega Man X era, with Dr. Kane just digging around in the dirt when Mega Man X wakes up like 200 years later and is the prototype for the new robot since he is leaner, sexier, and capable of exterminating cities with a single blast. What a joy! At least these robots mature and get older. They also find Bass 2 later on, who apparently needs his morning coffee. Some robots get ripped apart, and a task force of robots is called together to fight. Zero is labeled a Maverick, and they thus use this title to suspend his Miranda rights and tap into his phone calls. Sigma, the leader of the task force, punches Zero really hard, enough to remove his virus. Sigma didn't wash his hands, 
and got sick, and now he went rogue and started to kill things. I guess it's up to X, Zero, and the quadratic formula to stop Sigma. Mega Man gets some prototype weapons of war from holograms of light, who is clearly still alive and watching from afar based on how accurate and modern his dialogue is, and studying how to build better WMDs. Zero gets eviscerated by Vile, why do they stop the math naming thing, and Mega Man wins. Some robots call themselves the X-Hunters, which is a very specific profession, you should probably be assassins, you make more money that way, decide to start hunting X. They clearly did not study X at all, because X beats them into pulp and steals their souls. They had Zero's parts, and Dr. Kane fixes Zero, and both of them show up to kill Sigma, who has returned. Dr. Kane makes a robot scientist, Dr. Doppler, because obviously, the issue with all the war robots was that they weren't smart enough. <laughs> Why? Doppler decides to go out to great by creating a Doppler army and his Doppler city with his Doppler spaghetti, which is, unfortunately, delicious. He rebuilds Vile, as if that's ever worked before, and Zero uses his lightsaber to slaughter everything. It is at this point that X is disregarded as the main character because who wants to play this fool? Sigma shows up as the big baddie, but he was so evil that he became a ghost virus thing. Yeah, yeah, that's, this happened. Zero is too cool for that and wins. X and Zero made the cop duo, and the rest of the Maverick Hunters is disbanded. They have some aggressive words to say about this, but Zero has a laser sword. Laser sword defeats politics every time. But oh no, who would have guessed that Sigma was behind all of it? Psych! Zero's behind him and slices him into bits. At the end of X4, X begins to have premonitions or dreams or whatever about him becoming a Maverick and needing to be put down by Zero, so ultimately he and Zero will fight at one point. Zero, if, if I become a Maverick, you have to take care of me. Don't be ridiculous. Now hurry on back. Promise me. Zero. Dr. Kane is politely asked to resign so that the robot overlords can finally get rid of the human menace. Stigma shows up again, pulls down his pants, and is about to virus all over the world, but Zero decides to make him Uranus 2, but X hates that Zero's taken over the franchise and pushes him into the explosion. X pretends to be sorry about Zero's death, which, by the way, makes no sense because they're robots, which means you can just rebuild them like we've already done with Zero before, and Sigma keeps coming back, so obviously this really isn't that big of an emotional trauma thing. But X pretends to be sorry and becomes the sole leader of the Maverick Hunters. Then Zero shows up to savor this man, but then Sigma shows back up as a homeless dude and asks for the business. Zero gives him the same day shipping to hell. Mega Man X7 happens. We don't talk about it. X is whiny and pathetic, Axel's introduced as a new version of robot that can copy other robots, and Sigma is trying to steal souls or something. Zero is still Zero, we don't talk about it. This is it. Stop talking about it. Stop it! Despite the past 200 years being filled with robot rebellions and constant war, an updated form of robots that can imitate other robots are created, and these ones are Maverick-proof. <laughs> oh, of course. Sigma shows up, and these guys go evil. Who would have guessed? Bao shows up again, somehow, and kidnaps the robots in charge of the space elevator. Sigma gets deaded again, and the elevator robot apparently was the true conspirator, proclaiming that the robots can choose to go Maverick, again proving that giving AI to the robot slaves it was not a smart move. While X is being a punk-ass bitch like his dead, Axel shoots the elevator robot, and Zero does some laser stabbing. Sigma is classified as dead, since his virus can't affect a new version of robots, but I'm not holding my breath, especially since the last time an X game came out was 2004. Please make a new one. You keep making me the original Mega Man said, I, I want an X. Please make an X. At the end of X6, it's shown that Zero seals himself away, mostly to figure out who he is and what his purpose is, because he actually doesn't know who his creator is. Even though at the end of X5, we know that it's Wily. Axel disappears, like they literally never mention him again in any of the games, except for ZX Advent. 
which even then it's not really shown that be Axel for whatever. Anyway, and X continues to fight in the Maverick Wars with the old robots. Nothing like some good old genocide, huh? After the end of the X series, the timeline gets a little wonky. Most of that has to do with the fact that X5 was supposed to be the original canon ending, but then Capcom decided we're not going to let Kenji Inafune, the original creator, to let the series end because they can just make money off of the yearly installments. And so they made X6 basically without his direction, knowledge, or input in any way. And so we ended up making. Mega Man X Command Mission, which is in an alternate timeline and not considered canon, and Mega Man Zero series, which is considered canon mostly because it has the most entries into it and most games after this point are related to it in some way. After many revisions and retcons and weird statements from Capcom, they have finally figured out what happened with End of X6 into the Zero series, where instead of him sleeping and fighting at the same time, which happened at one point, he was just sleeping, got woken up about halfway through his little sleep cycle, and decided to fight with X in the Elf Wars. Two scientists do some creepy things to Zero while he's sleeping. Scientist 1 creates the first Cyber Elf, which is like an enhancement program or something. It's, I don't know, I don't really understand these things. And Scientist 2, Dr. Wheel, creates Omega, a robot rival to Zero. A quick question, Wheel. Um, where have we heard this before? And how has it gone before? Yeah, stop doing this. It obviously doesn't work. X uses the Mother Elf to destroy the Sigma virus permanently, even though the Reploids, the old robots, should have been retired when the security vulnerability was discovered 200 years ago, and Wheel proposes a plan to merge the elf with Omega to make a robot god and control all the robots. In the first instance of some rationality, the world says no. But then they forget that terrible people love to do their own thing and let Wheel just sit around. Wheel steals the elf, corrupts it to make the dark elf, and starts Mavic Wars 2. Depending on which version, Zero either gets deaded again, or his original body was made into a copy so that they could copy the cyber elf data and not really interrupt him sleeping, and so we see that this gets really confusing. This time, the writers remembered that robots are all digital data, and so Zero gets all of his personality copied over to a new body, and the old one gets distorted. Wheel uses the elf and Omega to literally destroy the planet and endanger both robots and humans. Zero and X win eventually, and then banish Wheel and Omega to space! Wheel is given armor with regeneration and permanent memory so that he doesn't forget his atrocities. Newsflash, Dumbos! I don't think that Wheel has any remorse. I'm pretty sure he's just a shitty dude. The writers remembered that Zero was supposed to be sleeping, so they put him back in the capsule, hoping that no one noticed. X imprisons the dark elf instead of doing anything to save her, then becomes a cyber elf while locking away his body. Plenty of smaller cyber elves are created. These ones are a one-time use and will die when their programming is activated. They gave these cyber elves feelings and life. Then activating the program kills it. Hey guys, you could have just made it a program. Not every robot needs sentience. Y'all are sick. And now I see where Wheel was coming from. Dr. Seal creates a copy X when she's like five and no one thought to maybe double check this child's work. Also, how did she figure this out? I was still trying to learn what a square was and this girl's out here soldering nanotechnology. Neo Arcadia is built as a utopia for robots and humans and four guardians are made in X's likeness. There is an energy shortage and Copy X decides to solve the problem fairly and diplomatically by killing all the robots. Steel forms a resistance, but they suck ass, and so she decides to try and find Zero. She finds him sealed away in a peaceful slumber, and she gets so mad that she has to live with this terrible world while this machine of war sleeps after a century of constant fighting. Just let the man sleep! She hurls an innocent cyber up at his capsule to wake him up, and he slaughters everything in his path. Zero has no memory of the past from being forcefully awakened, but he does know Laser Sword. He helps Seal destroy Copy X, beat down the Four Guardians, and Cyber Elf X asks Zero to keep fighting while his pathetic ass finds himself or something. Zero happily obliges by murdering everything in his path. Zero wanders the world, stabbing where he can, and then gets saved by one of the Guardians when he passes out. The Resistance is now led by the robot El Pizzo with a god complex. Seriously, they do this anime shit where he clearly shows that he will murder to get his way and no one thinks to unplug him. Seal is working on a generator to fix the energy problem, but Alpizo decides that killing Neo Arcadia will fix all of our issues. Zero chases down Alpizo, who is the short X's body, fused with the Dark Elf, and thinks that Zero is old news. Zero kills this pathetic clown, and the Dark Elf decides to make him into a Cyber Elf for some stupid reason. A giant spaceship then lands down, and Zero investigates the UFO to find Omega, Wheel, and Copy X2, who clearly needed more time in the oven because this man st stutters constantly. 
Copy X regains control of Neo Arcadia, Wheel goes after the Mother Elf, and Neo Arcadia starts doing some stupid things again. Steel refuses to give up her energy generator thingy, and so Neo Arcadia starts killing humans. Zero kills Copy X, who was rigged to explode by Wheel, Wheel takes over Neo Arcadia, and the Guardians realize that Neo Arcadia and X are both spicy garbage, so they side with Zero. And then Zero goes after Omega. Once Omega's forms are destroyed, he shows up in the original body of Zero. Although not the actual original, why didn't they use his actual body? Zero don't give no cares about his old body, and kills Omega with the help of the four Guardians. The Guardians die, although are later retconned to be alive, and Cyber Elf X dies, and Mother Elf is no longer corrupted. They let this powerful elf go, and even though Wheel has spent his entire life corrupting this elf, and this elf, and Wheel are both out in the world somewhere, they think that nothing bad will happen. Again. And so Mega Man Zero Four happens. Wheel shows up, kills some people, and creates a Death Star. The humans don't like robots anymore, although that's mostly their own fault for not fixing them in the beginning, and Zero goes after Wheel, who apparently never thought to get the mother off again. The story for this one is butt sauce. Wheel tells Zero that he himself is human and impervious to his lightsaber. Zero tests that theory and proves it wrong, because unlike Mega Man, he knows the shit won't end until this butthead is dead. Zero dies as well when the Death Star comes crashing into Earth. Seal goes to investigate the debris of the crash, find Wheel's robot human Death Star remains, which turn the robots into Mavericks. Can't they come up with new ideas? A new Sigma is born and he kills Seal, which is... Incredibly brutal for Mega Man games, a treaty is made between man and machine. Machines will get full lifespans instead of the Blade Runner style limitations, and humans must become cyborgs like the green ending from Mass Effect 3. I don't know why humans haven't done this earlier. Maybe because every robot gets hacked and starts causing problems. Anybody who refuses to cyborgify themselves is called a maverick and immediately disposed of. W why is Mega Man so keen on fascism and genocide? I, I Why? The world is ruled by three robots, Albert, Thomas, and Mikhail. As if the three humans they are based on didn't cause enough problems before. Sigma 2 solves the energy crisis, again, but mavericks start popping up everywhere and killing everybody. I thought the new robots were impervious to this virus thing. ZX gives the option to play the game as a boy or girl, but it makes no difference story-wise. The characters can merge with armored suits of different Mega Man characters. First they find Model X, Mega Man, then Model Z, Zero, then the Four Guardians. Sigma 2 reveals himself to be the true cause of the mavericks and the reason why their parents were killed. Woo! In some anime nonsense, Sigma 2 gets stronger from the character's rage, and so they instead fight with courage. Apparently robots can only siphon power from specific emotions, and Sigma 2 loses. ZX Advent has the same option of picking gender, but this one actually has some uniquity and difference in the character to it. Albert from the world government is picking up pieces of the Sigma suit to become all-powerful and reset the world. The character defeats his megalomaniacal psychopath, and all is right with the world, mostly because there's no sequel, probably because the games were not that great. God decides to send another flood to wipe everything out, but humans made airplanes, and God decides, meh, the humans will kill each other and sort out this problem, I'm gonna take another nap. At some point in the ZX series, this flood was supposed to happen, but the series got cancelled. Mega Man returns, this time in 3D. He shows up as Mega Man Volnut, with an Iron Man suit and a vacuum to clean up crime. He was abandoned in an underground ruin, and an archaeologist decided to adopt him. The world is back into an energy crisis, and money is made up of energy crystals that are found from the underground ruins of the old world. Mega Man goes into these ruins to get these crystals, but he's often an idiot, and he gets himself trapped. The good news is that his pilot and guide, Roll, is also an idiot and doesn't know how to help him. At least we have Gramps, the experienced digger who found Mega Man, who decides to not help at all and let the boy get lost in the ruins again. I suppose the game is trying to tell us that Gramps forgets adopting and taking in Mega Man by letting him die alone starving in this ruin filled with monsters. Their ship crash lands on an island, they fight some pirates and open up an ancient ruin. Because whenever main characters find an ancient treasure that has been sealed away for years, decades, or whatever, they never think, maybe that was for a good reason. Guys, maybe you should put this back. Mega Man finds an ancient antediluvian being that awakes from a sleeping pod, who should have been zero based on all the other stories about him going to a sleep pod, and apparently this goon wakes up every so often to wipe away the humans on this island to make sure that they don't get too rambunctious. Wait a second. Steve, this is just Mass Effect now. What? Why? This Reaper recognizes Mega Man, calling him a brother, basically, and Mega Man is certainly confused. Mega Man destroys the mass murderer, and his pet monkey tells him that his past will be revealed to him after these commercial breaks. Roll sees her long lost mother on TV and sets out to ask where the hell she's been. Personally, I would just let it go. My mother left me when I was a baby, and I think it's better that way, and I turned out fine. 
I'm not angry about it. Stop looking at me like that. They go to a frozen wasteland with endless storms from which no one escapes since Gramps decided to go Leroy Jenkins to try to find the Mother Lode, which is basically the energy crystal form of Elder Water. Mega Man saves everybody, stops the storms, and thaws all the people that were frozen there, one of whom happens to be an ancient goddess or something. The ancient goddess knows about the Mother Lode and tells Mega Man where to get the keys to unlock it. And he beats some pirate ass along the way. The ancient goddess lady turned out to be Rusty Nails and tries to kill Mega Man after all the keys are gathered, but Rose Mom shows up to save the day. How come my mom never showed up? This game was unrealistic. Negative 4 out of 10. Turns out that the ancient goddess is an ancient demon who's real jealous that Mega Man was the favorite child of the old master who rebuilt humanity. Rose mom is possessed by one of the ancient goddesses, and she helps get revenge. Mega Man and this lady had fought before, but both incapacitated each other, and Mega Man was placed in some life support crystal thing. Mega Man wins, but gets trapped on the moon. Capcom then announces Mega Man Legends 3 so that we can rescue this ancient god of war from the moon, just to cancel it almost immediately and spit in our faces by telling us that we didn't want it enough. I am not joking. In an alternate universe, Battle Network happens, where Mega Man shows up as an antivirus program with a cannon called a Navi. See, this is one thing that Mega Man did get right. I do wish that all antiviruses showed some sort of animation of explosions and war when they remove malware from a computer. Dr. Troy creates the Trojan virus. This is literally his backstory, but I had to include it because the names were so ridiculous. Tadashi Hikari, by the way, if I mispronounce some of these, they're actually in Japanese in both the English and Japanese version. The names for Battle Network and Mega Man Zero often kept the Japanese name, so I apologize if I mispronounce any of these. But Tadashi Hikari and Dr. Wily, by the way, you'll notice that pretty much every other Mega Man character shows up, create Bass.exe and the Alpha Internet. Alpha has some serious bad coding and destroys itself, taking Bass with it. Tadashi has a son, Dr. Yuchiro Hikari, who then has two kids, Lan and Hub. Although Hub dies and is transformed into a Navi, Mega Man for Lan. Although I understand that grief is hard and I cannot understand the pain of a parent in such a situation, I think we can all agree that mutating your child into a soldier program and giving it to your other child is probably psychologically damaging and terrifying. Lan is just a regular elementary school boy where he deals with bullies, boring school, and an ability to talk to girls until anime rules take over and he becomes the protagonist. I guess Capcom saw how successful Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon were, so they decided to get in on the action. Lan also enjoys jacking until he can bust some viruses. Hey Capcom, did you check to see if these words might mean anything else, or did you think it was hilarious for a kid's game? There's a strange virus going around the net that is making ovens explode and the plumbing freeze. Lan, instead of his father, who is far more experienced, is chosen to fight the crime organization called the WWW. By anime rules, Lan has a rival in the professional virus busting club with Child and Proto Man, who just happens to be like 16, because having anybody be an adult and good at what they do is not Japan style. But it turns out that Dr. Wily was behind it all. Turns out that Dr. Wily was all about robotics, but his partner, Tatashi Hikari, was all about the net and got his organization to cancel the robot department. Who would have seen that coming? Lan and Mega Man merge together to stop Wily with a program from his dad. Again, this is some creepy shit and defeat the virus that's about to launch nukes. Dr. Wily grumbles at his defeat instead of punching this kid so that he can't operate Mega Man. Seriously, most of these games could be resolved if people just mess with Lan, who is standing three feet away while Ollie's shouting the names of the battleships and explaining what they do for 40 minutes. A new net crime organization appears, and this time they shake it up by not making Wily, Sigma, Wysigum, or Sigly the villain. This time it's a young boy who was never loved and wishes to purge the world of impurities, and so he decides to recreate Bass, but he sucks at programming and made him pathetic. Mega Man wins, and Lan has an anime heart to heart with this terrorist that he's just misunderstood instead of willingly causing the end of modern world because of hurt feelings. Lan joins a pro tournament and wins, but it was all a ploy by the WWW to announce the return, instead of, you know, doing what every other crime syndicate does and just wreaking havoc and doing crime. So Lan goes to beat Wily's ass again, before the WWW can actually do anything. They have brought back Alpha to eat the net again. Any good developer would know to plug up holes in the new versions to prevent this, but this is actually a real thing because IT people are lazy and or arrogant. Mega Man and Lan merge again to go kill Alpha, but when Alpha dies, Mega Man gets sucked in with it. Inside Alpha's programming, they meet their grandfather, but in order to escape, Mega Man has to sacrifice himself, and Lan gets to live. All is sad and miserable in the world until Dr. Akari receives Mega Man and Alpha Code, and then gives the twice-dead brother back to Lan. 
Lan once again is chasing some random criminals around, even though he's still like 10 or 12, finds some dark battleships which corrupt the Nabbies, but give them untold power. He then again goes into a tournament forgetting the horrors that happened last year, and once again, a new crime organization has arisen, using the tournament as a means to spread the dark chips and cover the world in darkness. No, it doesn't make any sense, just go with the enemy nonsense. An asteroid is heading directly for Earth, and NASA tries to laser it apart, but they suck so much that the anime protagonist Lan has no choice but to save everybody. Mega Man hacks into the network on the asteroid that has no life on it, but has computers and a whole ass cyber system. But Nebula was planning to use it. Listen, fuckers, if they had the ability to colonize an asteroid, why not find a new planet if they had hated Earth so much? Lan and Mega Man go to Space Network and defeat the space terrorists. Turns out they convinced the OS of the asteroid that Earth is good. Mega Man had the chance to use the dark chips, but he didn't, and so there's good in the world, even though I constantly use the dark chips in my playthroughs. The OS, which should not have emotions or thoughts, by the way, is asked to stop giving sentence to the working machines and is told that it's not a good idea. He stupidly agrees and decides to not kill Earth. At the end of Battle Network 4, it's discovered that Regal, the leader of Nebula, is actually Wily's son and is just a ripe old bastard. And a strange turn of events for a Mega Man game, instead of being put in jail or being let go to wander the world, he actually jumps off a cliff to avoid any sort of punishment, which is an interesting change of events. But of course, it's Mega Man. If you don't have recurring villains, what are you doing with your life? So in Battle Network 5, he returns again with Nebula. This time, the writers actually did something logical and decided to make Nebula kidnap Lan's dad and use his workplace as the method for destroying the Met. They would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for those pesky anonymous guys. Lan joins with the Master Busters and Jackson harder than ever to take down Nebula. Dr. Akari's had enough of the shit and moves his family away. Triple W reappears and starts more shenanigans, whereupon Lan decides to go murder. Mega Man gets corrupted with the programming of the Cyber Beasts then goes beast mode to kill them. And at the end of Battle Network 6, it shows that Wily is trying to be a Sith by throwing away all his emotions except for rage and depression because he never had a good life. And instead of just letting things go, he decides to harbor inside of himself and it ends up just killing him and everybody around him. But there's a whole anime heart to heart with Lan and Beryl because Beryl was an adopted son of someone that he cared for and did even though he had no actual obligation to do so. In the very end, Wily from jail decides to cooperate and do everything he can to fix all the problems that he did and build great things for the world instead of being a bastard. Mega Man then uses a mannequin thing to enter the world permanently, which I'm sure won't have any problems. It's not like having robots live alongside humans has ever caused problems, especially ones very prone to viruses. In the epilogue to 6, since it's the last entry in the series and was planned to be so, it goes over all the future events, where Dex becomes the mayor of Den City, Yai takes over for her father in nepotism, Mail and Lan get married, and Child becomes the leader of the International Master Busters. Mega Man Star Force happens, unfortunately, basically it is the ZX of the Battle Network. It's not terrible, but the former series was so much better. A young boy, Geo Stellar, gets some sick shades from a co-worker of his missing father. These shades allow him to see and interact with some trans-dimensional beings called the Ephemians, and they can merge into Mega Man. Many other Ephemians come down to Earth but don't respect consent and just basically possess people. The only solution is to pummel the possession away. Geo gets manipulated into helping the Ephemians, falls into a slump, and returns to be a sulky kid. Despite the obvious need for therapy and love, his mother decides to do nothing. Geo gets a signal from his father's space station and rushes there in the hopes to find him there. What else does he find but some laundry in desperate need of washing? He rejoins with his alien friend and beats the sense of the Ephemian King to realize that he should not destroy Earth or else. Star Force 2 happens and does the same thing, but this time people can just go into the electromagnetic dimension at will, without an alien friend. Whatever, man. The crime organization is trying to revive the lost civilization of Mu on an asteroid. After Mega Man wins, Le Mu, who is the alien thing, not the asteroid, decides to send Mu, the asteroid, not the alien, to crash into Earth. Mega Man uses literally the power of friendship to get the strength in his fists to convince him to land in the ocean. Despite the logistical issues of tsunamis and the general forces of a massive asteroid hitting the planet, everything is fine and dandy. A new crime organization comes about using Withards, who are the net navvies of Star Force, to take over the world. The big bad guy is using EM interference and also a giant asteroid like everybody else to hold the planet hostage. Like always, everybody stands around and talks for a while instead of doing 
anything actually dangerous, and so Mega Man gets to blast his goon into the dead dimension. Geo's dad is found too, and the family reunites, and that is where the series ends. Thanks everybody for watching. I'm sure some of you have some dissenting opinions and things that I skipped over, got wrong, or whatever. Yes, I know it's pronounced base. Yes, I know that the robots in the Mega Man X universe are called Reploids. I don't care. It's not that important to me. That's not what this timeline is for. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. But until next time, Wally, take home, nice.